are you doing, Joe? I'm doing great, Toby. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of Mirror Talk. Um, your soccer story is very inspiring. I read about this in your bio. I read about how you, you know, hit rock bottom in 2010, lost your wife to PTSD, and your house was in foreclosure. Can you share this story with me? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I live in the U.S., and uh, 2008 was kind of a, a not a fun year for a lot of people in the housing market and in the country as a whole, right? We kind of a mini recession and, and really bad financially. Um, you know, and because of that, like my wife had, um, the, there was some PTSD onset from a couple of events that happened in, in, 2000, um, in 2008. She was working at a small credit union um, and she was held up at gunpoint twice in six weeks. Um, and, and because of those events and, and a lot of other trauma we found out about later, um, she kind of went into this kind of dark hole of PTSD and, and um, because of the financial crisis, you know, we, we lost the whole income in the family, right? Um, we, we had two incomes. Uh, we lost our income. She couldn't work anymore. Um, and it got me thinking, okay, I need to find a way to kind of um, take care of my family. Um, and so in that process, I found a new job. We moved across the country, uh, you know, and, and part of that, you know, looking hindsight now, <laughs> I look back at it, I'm like, that probably wasn't the smartest thing to do because we left our whole support system back, you know, um, from where we grew up. Um, but because of that, it kind of started this, this whole transformation period for us, right? And looking back at it now, we can say that at the time, uh, it, it felt really hard and difficult to go through what we were going through. Um, you know, like you mentioned, we lost the house to foreclosure during that, that, that time. Uh, we were no longer living in Utah. Uh, and that's where our house was at. We had bought it like at the, at the height of the, the housing bubble that was happening here. So we bought it for too much. We couldn't sell, sell it. We had to get out. Um, and so, you know, it, it came down to a decision of, you know, do I help my wife and get the medical attention she needs or do we try to keep the house right and I had burnt through like 401k money and everything trying to save it um and at the end of the day i, I remember the day I, I made this conscious decision you know of my wife's the most important thing to me and a house is just something i can repair my credit i can you know figure all that other stuff out later um you know the, the banking industry is very good at saying you know you're gonna be a horrible human being if you like don't pay us back and i understand that like i like 100 percent you know, always agree with paying your debts. But at that yeah. point in time, it was my wife's life or it was me paying for a house. So, you know, that kind of started the, the whole kind of cascade of my learning about money in a way of how it, not so much the financial side, but how it affected me personally and emotionally. And as I started to like kind of go through the next couple of years after that, um, as she worked through her PTSD and counseling and, and uncovering like all these things that were um, taking her to a very dark place, mm. you know, I was in charge of providing hundred percent for the family and making sure that, you know, all the shopping was done, all the, you know, all the household things were taken care of along with working and, and making, you know, the in income that we could survive on. Mm. Um, and so it, it, it got me to a place of, you know, what mattered most in my life mm. and what didn't matter as much. Yeah. And at that point in time, you know, like paying back credit cards, in a timely manner, didn't matter as much as like making sure my wife got the help she needed. Yes. So it's kind of a fun kind of just going through it um, in a way that really opened my eyes to how does money affect us emotionally and on a personal level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we put, and how much weight we put in trying to be kind of the, the good model citizen from a financial perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and how much, you know, that weighs in on our decisions. And if we can kind of start separating the two Obviously, like I say, I 100% agree, you know, taking care of my obligations that I, that I agreed to, but at the same time, understanding why I'm making decisions on a personal level and how money influences that uh, completely changed my life, right? And it, it kind of, you know, one of those things, this was kind of a huge example and people are always like, you know, do you have to go through something that, that big for you to realize that? And I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah. But for me, it was a huge wake up call, yeah. right? And then yes. trying to understand what was happening in and, and how do I get through this on the other end so that I'm still sane, so my wife's still alive and I have the things I need, you know, and I'm taken care of. Yes. So talking about, talking about wake up call, can you tell me about your journey of healing and self-recovery that, you know, changed the way you saw yourself or changed the way you looked at money or changed the way you um, dealt with other relationships around yourself? Yeah. And I think that was a, the, the biggest wake up call was that my relationship with myself was really bad. Mm. Um, I was a smart guy. I had a good job. I made a lot of money. All right, through this transition, 
of all this time, I actually went from making about 54,000 US dollars a year in my one job to making within a four year period, I doubled that. So I was making just over, um, I was making about 106,000 um, US. And it was an interesting process as I went through this because it's kind of like the refiner's fire, right? I just kind of got melted into all the craziness that was happening, all the chaos that was going on in my life. And, uh, you know, and, and waking up and being like, you know, I'm not, I don't know, do I even like this life anymore? Right? I had some of those thoughts too. I'm like, do I even like what I'm going through? Sometimes we just put our heads down, especially when it comes to finances. And we're just like, if we can just get through it, then life will be better. Um, or if we can just make more money, right? And I thought, well, if I just make over $100,000 a year, life will be a little bit easier for me and it won't be so hard. And then I hit that milestone and life actually got worse, right? I was uh, probably one of the biggest wake-up calls I had during the process was I remember I'd hit like that $106,000 mark and I'm like, yeah, you know, I have it. Now we can do it. But yeah. then all the hospital bills and, and some of the other bills started coming in. And I'm like, but I can't pay for everything. And I remember mm -hmm. going to my local church leaders and I'm like, I need some help. Like, and, and it was so almost disheartening for where I was at. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm making all this money, but I can't take care of my family. You know, and it was like swallowing a lot of pride. And I'm like, I went to my, like I said, my local church leaders. And I'm like, I need some help. Right? Is there anything you can do to help? Because I can't pay everything and still feed my family and all this stuff. Um, and they stepped up in a big way. Right, They were able to help with the resources they had in the way they could. So I could start kind of digging myself out of this one financial hole we were in, but also kind of the emotional hole of like, I didn't have to do it all myself. Right, That I could form relationships with other people and people could help me get to where I wanted to go. And it wasn't like in a way that they were wanting something out of it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we think a lot of times with relationships, it's like, oh, if I do something for them, what are they going to want back? Mm -hmm. Right. But this was like a true, sincere kind of relationship with them in a way that they offered up and said, hey, you know, we can help with some food. We can help with, you know, maybe some of your utilities. Let's go get you back to where you need to be. Yes. And we'll, and we'll just like figure that out. Right. But there was nothing they were asking for in return. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you so know, so, uh, you know, that, that's kind of where the wake up call for me started. Uh, as I like, again, on my self discovery for myself, I'm like, huh, what do I really think? How, what are the kind of relationships I want to have, you know, and start working on those. Yeah. Wow. That's so two things. Like, first of all, the hundred K was like a milestone for you. Right. But then when yeah. you are, when you arrived there, you were like, Oh, I, bit more money, more problems. Oh, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. A hundred percent. Wow. So that means um, making more money is not like the promised land, actually. It's, um, because it boils down to having great relationship with others, as you mentioned, you know, having genuine love around yourself for people who can support you without wanting anything more from you or, you know, having developing um, a kind of mindset that does, does not look at money as, you know, the ultimate goal or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and a lot of people always come to me and say, hey, Joe, you know, and you hear it all the time when you talk to people, if I could just make more money, if I had more money, then life would be different. And I, and I always tell them like, exactly, you are a hundred percent right, but it's going to be different in the way you think it is. Mm. Right. Cause like you said, more money, more problems. Like we uplevel our problems. We, if we have more then there's other things we can consider now, right. For people who are, um, you know, making hardly anything at all and looking at like, you know, the poverty level in the United States and where they're at, their problems are very different than mine. I don't have to worry about where I'm going to sleep at night or what I'm going to eat. And I understand those are really real true problems. However, if you make more money, um, it doesn't necessarily take all those away, right? You can see this over and over. Uh, some of the, the best things I love reading on the internet are when someone wins, like in the United States, they have like the big, like mega millions or Powerball, right? The big lotteries. And you've, you've read over time, people, you know, made or won these. And if there's a single winner, you know, like they two, three, four hundred million dollars. Like that's a lot of money. But then you look at it and the statistic is 70% of the people who win these big lotteries are bankrupt in two years. And so you can't say that, just give me more money and my life will be better. Mm. That doesn't work. Like, statistically, we can see that that's not the case. Yeah. So let's go back and be like, what's the case? If we have a better relationship with ourselves and those around us, then the money just basically is like gasoline on a fire, right? It just accentuates who we are. Mm -hmm. And for a good person wanting to change the world, then we're going to continue to do that. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. If we're not, then we're going to go do, you know, all these other things that, you know, people don't like. But again, it's, it's a mindset of how we interact in this relationship with money. Mm -hmm. That is the, the key focus that I look at, because if we can solve for that, mm -hmm. then money is a byproduct of all those relationships and all that heavy lifting and work we do 
in our businesses or even in life and in, in corporate or whatever you're, you know, you're earning money, yes. you can apply the same principles to any aspect of your life. Yes. Yeah. That, that's very good. That's very awesome. Like, so, you know, talking about, yeah, you made mention of working on yourself, you know, having this great relationship with yourself. And um, so how can I master the game of emotion so that I can take control of the money in my life? Like, for example, tomorrow I, I, win, a, I win a lottery, for example, how can I master, um, you know, the game of emotions to control that amount of money that I won through the lottery or um, from my income I'm having currently now? Yeah, so uh, that's an interesting question you pose. Um, it's something I've thought about a lot, right? I mean, personally for myself, and again, I'm not a finance guy, but I always, I always joked. Um, there was a couple of times it got pretty big when we live in Maryland. Um, and some coworkers would be like, what would you got, you know, if you hit the, like, this billion dollar lottery? And I'm like, first of all, I'd get a bank account. I just put all the bank account and just like let it set for a amount of time, right? Maybe like six months and I'd hire a lawyer, right? Take care of the, take care of the legal side of whatever you got to do. But looking back at what I know now, I would still do those same actions. I would take and I would, I would put it aside and I'd be like, okay, so what are the emotions coming up? Right? What, what, because here's the, the biggest thing, Toby, most of the time people don't understand that like wealth abundance like they're really games of emotion right as we understand ourselves better the money is just going to reflect back to us right mm -hmm. really what we're feeling about ourselves so if we get a lot it's like it's the biggest thing i see is if you get a lot of money like that it's almost like standing in this huge mirror where you can see everything about you but you're like completely naked mm -hmm. right that's the yes. biggest visual i can give and the, the first step i always look is like you know we have to be aware of the emotions coming up or if we can understand the emotions starting to come up when we get like a large sum of money or even a little bit, mm -hmm. we can start to understand, okay, at least I'm aware. Like, what am I feeling? Ask yourself, you know, always, what am I feeling? Oh, I'm feeling kind of uncomfortable. I'm feeling excited. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling kind of a little angry. I don't know, maybe a little sad, mm -hmm. right? If we can start to understand what the emotion is, then we can start to understand what actions we're going to take next, right? Because if we understand and can acknowledge and accept these emotions that we have. Because most of us, like, I know growing up for myself, like I was told not to be angry a lot. Like I was told to basically disconnect from my emotions. Mm -hmm. So I didn't understand them a lot. And a lot of people I work with are kind of in that same boat, right? They're not understanding these emotions that we have are natural mm -hmm. and it's okay to have them. There are no bad emotions. The only thing that can be that we label a society bad is what we do with those emotions, right? The actions we take. So if we can just accept and be like, oh, cool, I have these emotions. Yay, I have them. I can, I can at least call them out. I might not understand them, but I can call them out. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a cool first step. Yes. Right? So if you've got a lot of money and be like, okay, I have these emotions. I'm not quite sure what to do with them. That's totally cool. But just being like aware and then accepting like I have emotions. That's a cool place to start because now we're starting to listen to our bodies. Right? It's like a good friend. If we don't listen to our good friend, they're not going to stick around for very long. Right? We're, mm -hmm. friend, friends don't like monologues. Friends like dialogues. Yeah. That's right? Yes, it's the same yes. thing with ourselves. If we want to have a better relationship with our friends, we have our friends or ourselves, we have to have a dialogue. Mm -hmm. Right? And so in, in the process of emotions, I love journaling exercises, you know, just writing down questions, what am I feeling today? And then I'll journal, I'll put on like maybe some nice music, you know, some nice instrumental music, and just write for like three minutes. Mm -hmm. Ask myself questions, because if I can understand or another really good one too, is like, you know, if I'm feeling angry or feeling sad, it's like, why am I feeling sad? Because as we can start to understand them, then we can start to do something about them, mm. right? But if we don't understand what's going on, then we just continue to do the same actions over and over and get the same results. Yes, yeah, that's true. And that's, you know, where we kind of fall in this trap. So if somebody gives you lots of money, mm. most people are going to want to give it away. Mm -hmm. We can't handle it because it, again, it's like that mirror. It's reflecting back all of these things we don't like about ourselves, we don't understand about ourselves. Mm. And subconsciously, we think it's the money, right? And so we'll give it away, we'll, we'll help friend. And, and, and a lot of times, I'm not saying people are doing it like in an evil manner. A lot of times we'll think, oh, I see a need over here. I wanna help my family out. So we're gonna go do those things. Not understanding that it's the emotions inside that the money caused is what's actually driving you to the actions that you're taking right now. Yeah. So we want to kind of, you know, deconstruct that and start looking and be like, huh, why am I doing that? Why is my favorite question? I ask myself why all the time yeah. and then ask why again and again and again, because if we don't, then I don't know, if we can't get to that root cause, it makes it hard. That's true. That's very true. Like one of us always have the, um, the reason why you are doing something as in you know, ask yourself why 
so you can have um, you know um, points or reasons why you are taking an action or why you are you know doing something actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's that's great. So you know, um, I found something very interesting about you. Is I read that um, <laughs> that you you talk to money and it speaks back to you. And I, I was asking myself, how does that work? How do you speak to money? And how can I hear back from money when I speak to it? So how can I speak to money? <laughs> I love this question. And I put it out there like when, when I figured out that this was a, a cool tool that works. And, uh, you know, I would say if you look at like a spiritual level of Joe, right, I have this affinity towards money and not again, like making tons of it. I've made plenty of it in my life, um, but more like on a friendship relationship level. Like I understand, I understand what it does. Uh, like you say, it's a big mirror mm. uh, for ourselves. So uh, I, where it came about, I don't entirely know, but I just started talking to money. I'm like, hey, money, you know, and I have, um, you know, people who are going to listen to this aren't going to see, but I have a stack of money that sits on my desk, right? And it's a cool, a cool reminder, right, of like, hey, I can be a friend with this thing. And as I started thinking about money as a relationship, I'm like, huh, well, I like to talk to my friends. Again, like, you know, I said a minute ago, we, we can't, our friends don't like us just having monologues because they want to share in the, con I mean, it's relationships, right? We want to have both sides. So I started thinking, huh, if I talk to money, what will it say back to me? If I really want a good relationship with it, if I want it to be my friend, mm. I got to talk to it. Mm. So one day I just started talking to money. <laughs> and I'm like, and people are laughing. They're like, that seems so weird. And I'm like, I had a mentor a long time ago. And he says, you know, it's only weird if it doesn't work. Mm. Right. And this, this yes. works very well. It's a cool, you know, so I'll ask it. And in the beginning, my wife thought it was a little weird, um, you know, because I literally have this conversation in my office. And she's like, who are you talking to? And I'm like, I'm talking to my money. And she's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm literally talking to it. She's like, like literally talking to your cash. I'm like, yeah. So the whole concept that I like is that I, I take out a pen and paper, right? I, it's like a journaling exercise, but again, ask your, ask it questions, write down on the paper, what your intention is. Hey, money, um, you know, X, Y, Z. Well, I had yesterday, coincidentally, I had a perfect, I have a perfect example of this. I sat down and, I, and this is part of my morning routine. I sit down, I talk to my money. And then I'm like, okay, money, what are we going to do today? Like some days I'm like, okay, where are we going to find more of you today? Where are your friends at? Mm -hmm. Right. How can I help people change how their perception of you? Cause that's my big goal. Toby is like to change the way people talk and interact with money. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'll have these journaling exercises. And I'm like, you know, I'm writing down and, and yesterday I'm like, huh, I had the thought come to me as I was doing it. And I'm like, because it's saying, Hey, where are we going to go to today? What are we going to do? And it says, you know, you really should pay this contractor of yours, right? And my, I have some contractors and people who work for me and, you know, they'll send me bills and they have due dates. And so my, my goal is always to pay them before, yeah. um, you know, and sometimes as business owners, life gets a little busy. And so I'm like, I'll put them in like a, you know, a to-do folder and, and have them checked, but it, it's when they're paid. And, and this particular one had just sent it and um, it wasn't due for another couple of weeks. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to pay you. Right. That's what money told me to do to pay my contractor. Yes. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to go pay the contractor. And it wasn't a whole lot. And so I paid it. I'm like, yeah, this feels good. Like, let's keep going. Let's just like, move along today. And I move along today. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I kid you not, like a couple hours later, I get a Stripe notification of somebody who bought something from me. Ooh, nice. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> right. So it, it's this kind of reciprocal thing, but it's like journaling and then doing the, the thing that, that it's talking to you because deep down on the tool, right. We talk to money. We are, we're already listening to what it says. We're taking back to, you know, the emotional side. We're already taking actions and steps based upon what money's telling us. Mm. We're just not aware of it. Mm. So if we start to become more conscious of what that conversation is mm -hmm. and what we're actually doing, those actions mm -hmm. that the emotions are driving us to do, yes. then we can start to take more actions that are aligned with where we want to go. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yes. And again, this, is a, this isn't just like in business or um, anything. This is a life principle you can use it for any aspect of your life to be like, hey, ask it the hard questions because it's going to reflect back to us what we're already thinking. Now, I always have to caution people because I'm like, money's literally not going to like open his mouth and talk to you, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to do what you feel inspired to do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's where the big thing comes from. Sometimes we'll, we'll get back, you know, guidance and, and, and ideas that we don't feel like they make sense. Mm -hmm. Right, we can't always connect those dots, uh, but I always say just go do it as long as you know it's still legal, moral, or ethical. Right, those are my kind of guiding principles, and that it's not going to kill you by doing it. Go do it and see what happens, mm. because a lot of times it's moving things inside of us that we can't quite see in the moment. 
Yes. But we can look back retrospectively and be like, oh, okay, I see how these are connected now. Mm. So, yeah. Um, well, how, how, how do I start with this? Do I um, pick a physical pile of money and speak to it? Or I can open my bank accounts on my online banking and say, okay, yeah, money, <laughs> let's talk. <laughs> do, you, do I have to have like, a pile of money on me? You don't have to have a pile of money, but I, I always recommend having some physical cash, right? Mm -hmm. And with COVID world, some people are still a little, um, you know, cautious of having paper money. Mm -hmm. um, definitely let it air out. But yeah, like I have in my wallet, I always carry at least a dollar. Mm -hmm. um, so you can even have like a dollar, you know, I'd, but I have the pile of cash because it does something else. It's a, kind of a different tool as well. Um, but yeah, just having like a simple dollar, you can have some coins, just talk to it. Have something physical though. That always works better than just like opening up your bank account and saying, hey, here's this digital number. I'm going to talk to it because I know that represents money. Mm -hmm. But uh, I like, I'm, I'm more tangible person, right? I like reading physical books still. I like, and so that physical connection, yes. you know, it's, a, it's a, I guess the difference is this year's really told us, right? It's a difference of like having friend calls over Zoom, which are okay. We get to see them. Yeah. But it's still better if we can have like friends or family close by, right? Where we, we really as humans want that physical connection. Yes. So there's a different energy and different um, kind of reaction we get internally when that happens, like, you know, the physical part versus just, you know, the Zoom calls are cool, but mm -hmm. I, I want to be with people in person. It's much, it's a different dynamic. Yes, that's true. Yeah. And so. if, I, if I've understood you correctly, Ray, um, the way money speaks back to me is, by what I get back from my actions, for example, like we made mention of um, you getting paid for a job done or something, or getting um, like an offer from from someone after you paid a contractor. Is, is that the way money speaks back? Yeah, it really speaks back, um, and, and you can see the actions coming back in. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, it sits down. If you sit down and say, "Hey, money, what's up going on today?" and I always have a piece of paper and a pen and just write. And whatever comes to your brain, like if it's an action step, if it's like a conversation, sometimes. You know, I'll hear it say some things. I'm like, okay, cool. And I'll just write down just kind of like a free form journaling exercise, mm -hmm. you know, but, but don't like self edit. Don't think, oh, this is stupid. I don't know where this is going because that doesn't help. Right. It's telling ourselves that we don't know internally what's happening with us. Yes. Right. But if we can like sit down and just like write down and, and not be, not have any prejudice about what we're writing. Right. This is for you only. You don't got to share it with anybody, but mm -hmm. just write down whatever comes up. And as that does, you will find the gems and the golden things in the, in, the, in the next action steps that you want to do, you know, to, to move forward. And it could be, hey, you know, call this friend you haven't talked to in months. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know why, right? And there's no, uh, you don't need an agenda, yeah. but just like, you know, reach out or, or fill in whatever you're inspired to do because we know it internally mm -hmm. and we're just bringing it to the surface so we can go take those steps that will help us move forward. Yeah, yeah. thanks. And talking about, um, talking about, you know, moving forward in life, everyone's, um, you know, ambition or everyone, everyone's aim is to, you know, become prosperous either financially or in relationships or in any form. And you've talked about wanting already, like, you know, talking to money and it's speaking back to you positively. That's a way of making progress um, towards prosperity. So are there like other procedures for prosperity? Like, and what am I supposed to do in order to ensure that I become prosperous in every way of my life? Yeah, and I, I like that because um, I do run a course called Procedures for Prosperity. I, I thought about this for my clients and I, and I boiled it down because I'm like, a lot of people talk about abundance. A lot of people talk about wealth. And I'm like, I don't know. We, we can talk all day about my thoughts on some of those because they're, they're part of the puzzle, but they're not the whole piece, mm. right? So I, I, like, I gravitate more towards prosperity because I feel like prosperity is active, mm. right? We're actively working on relationships. We're actively working on our wealth. We're actively working on getting money. And as we're doing that, then we're becoming more enlightened human beings. And, and that's kind of, at the end of the day, like more of my alignment with the word prosperity, right? We're, we're increasing all aspects of our life, just not the financial side, right? Because the mm -hmm. finances are one piece. But at the end of the day, money is a mechanism or a resource for me to get what I really want. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very few people, I would even call almost no people in this world, are really motivated by simply just money. Right. Money again is that resource for us to get what we really want. Mm. Right. And what's that big vision? And there's, you know, visioning exercises like, what do you really want to have happen in this world? You need money, but money is one aspect of that. Right. You need people, resources, other things to make that happen. You can have all the money in the world and still not have that satiation of what you really want, like that higher calling, I guess you could call it inside of you, really attainable. Mm. 
And again, like I say, money is part of that. So if we look at prosperity, prosperity for me is really obtaining kind of that higher value calling that you feel called to do. Mm. And again, like I say, people need money. And a lot of times money or even resources being people or other things are the things holding them back from making that happen. Mm. So if we can work on money, right? If we can get more money in our lives, well, through that process, kind of an insider tip here, through that process, you're going to get more relationships with people, right? Because you're going to be like, you know, out there trying to make money. You're going to be meeting people. You're going to be like expressing your ideas for what you want. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, you know, you're going to get people giving you money sometimes. Like I I ran um, a little week-long class a little bit ago and uh, like halfway through, right? The first day I talked about vision and like, hey, what do you want, right? Because it's tied into prosperity. If you don't know what you want, it's hard to be like work towards that. Mm -hmm. Um, Halfway through the week, uh, one of the uh, ladies that was... um, they're participating. She's like, well, what I really want is me and my husband want to create like this community for homeless people so we can help them get back on their feet. I'm like, oh my gosh, you didn't tell us about that in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Right. And people within the, within the week long class, they're like, oh, I want to help in that. Let me know when you start that. I want to contribute. I want to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Right. If she had never spoken what she really wants, right. Then people couldn't have bought in to her vision. Mm-hmm. So as we start to do that, as we start to look and say, okay, How do I want my life to be prosperous? What's my big vision? What do I really want to accomplish? Right. Then people can start buying into that vision and be like, oh, cool. I like that. I don't want to head that up, but I'll contribute. Mm -hmm. That's part of like my resources I'm obtaining. I'll, I'll give to you so that you can make your big dream happen. Yes. Right. So as we start digging through all this, we got to be vocal. We got to be like, Hey, how can I make my life more prosperous? What's that angle I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, like these, these resources will start to show up for us. Hmm. Yes. So we're not to actually find out that higher calling that we're not upon into our life. Like you have to know what your dream is, what your visions are and walk towards that. Make it um, be vocal about and you know, be, um, you know, make it known to other people when you are making plans for it. And you see um, if other people support you, other people help you on the way towards going there. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, like if, if she hadn't said something, I would have never known. Right. Mm, yes. right. If I was to you, Toby, and say, hey, Toby, what's your biggest dream you want to do? If you don't tell me, I can't help you because I, I can't read your mind. Right. Yes. Of course. <laughs> and sometimes okay. we feel we start, it's like those emotions around money because we're like, oh, you know, and the emotions coming up about money and what we want to do. Sometimes, you know, we hold our voice back a bit because we're like, oh, it's just me, you know, talking again. I don't want to, you know, overwhelm the conversation. Yeah. And if we don't do that, then people don't know. Mm. And, you know, the universe can't conspire to help us if we never like speak out what we want, mm. right? We have to have at least enough passion to say, hey, this is what I want to do. Yes. And then we can start, you know, running down that road. That's true. And I also, I also like one part of what you said, you said, um, like being prosperous in life, money, just, money is just a little part of it. It's not everything. Um, so, you know, for example, <laughs> when I was quite younger and I hear about prosperity and someone asked me, oh, Toby, um, what do you want to be in, in future? I'll say, I want to be prosperous. What does that mean to you? Like, oh, I want to make money, a lot of money, a lot of money. <laughs> so that was like the goal. I don't know. I would like to make money. I don't know, but I just want to be prosperous. And that's equals to, you know, making a lot of money <laughs> in future. But that's not the truth. The truth is like money is just a little part of it. The, be, be, being prosperous is um, achieving or fulfilling your vision and answering the higher call upon your life. Yes. Thank, thanks yeah. for, for clearing that out for me. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so from all your all your um, experiences and your weeks of training that, that you give to people or the years of training that you give to people, what do you see as the um, the common issues that restrict people's earning potential? What do you see um, limiting people from you know at, um, reaching their full potentials um, in, in, in terms of prosperity or in terms of making more money or making um, better relationships with people? Yeah, I think the biggest thing I see um, and tying it back to, um, you know, I talked about people about their money stories, right? What's, what are those experiences from childhood that, that drive you to make the decisions you do as an adult? Um, you know, and, and most of them come back to abandonment, right? We, we felt abandoned in some way, shape or form when we were children. Um, and then we equate that to money. And we're like, as we start to like set our, our dreams on doing big things, um, or even like the small things that feel big to us, right? Uh, it's not always everybody's dream to like, you know, change the way the world looks. Um, You know, some people have big dreams to them, but you know, if we start comparing them, which don't ever compare, um, you know, they look smaller, but it doesn't matter what we want to do. 
but we feel abandoned. And so it's hard for us to start building relationships if we feel like every relationship we're going to get in is just going to end in like hurt and abandonment, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we're trying to create a relationship with money, right, then we're going to, we already start from that kind of precedence that it's just going to hurt us. So then I don't need money, right? And we start to take this altruistic stance of like, I don't need money. I just, because money equals all kinds of, the money's evil or whatever we want to say. But deep down inside, if we take a look at it and look back at us, it's the times that we've kind of not done what we said we wanted to do. Right? And we've kind of abandoned our dreams because life gets hard. Or, you know, something comes up and we're like, hey, it must look like X, Y, and Z. And it doesn't start to unfold that way. And so we're like, oh, well, let's see, here's another, you know, smashed dream that I can no longer obtain. And so that relationship with ourselves is where it really starts. So if we can start to change the way we think it and see ourselves, then we can start to move forward. And it makes those external relationships so much easier to look at and to interact with. Um, and we become, at some point we become unstoppable because the conviction on the inside is so strong that people either buy in or they get out of the way. Like one of the two will happen. So. So these are like common issues that, you know, restrict people from, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so um, you, earlier you made mention of, you know, um, <laughs> earlier you made mention of, you know, this, this fixation and fixation on abundance. You made mention of the, you know, people like concentrating on abundance and I myself, you know, I talked about like, um, you know, just wanting, wanting to make more money, like, you know, um, having that dream of, okay, I just want to have money. So why, why do you think, or why do you think um, our fixation on abundance actually harms us than, rather than setting us free um, financially or setting us free in every ramification of life? Why do you think that our fixation of, you know, wanting more and more and more um, actually, you know, causes damages to our, to our lives? I think that goes back to what I said earlier, right? Money, mm -hmm. I view money as a fuel, right? If you have a fire and you pour gasoline on it, you're going to get more fire right? Um, and money does the same thing. If we're not sure of ourselves, if, if there are pieces or aspects we don't like, or, um, you know, it, being a well-rounded human being and caring about other people, because we pour more money on that, that's going to just accentuate those, those behaviors and those emotions and things that we do, or the reactions we do to, to different emotions. Mm -hmm. um, so if we pour more money on that, it's just going to, again, accentuate that. It's, it's not going to fix the problems that we have internally. Like we're the only people who can really fix those, right? Yes. And, and not that we're broken humans when we say fix, but you can look at them and say, why do I do that? Mm. Well, I don't like that I do that. I don't like that I treat certain people this way. Mm. What, can I, what can I do about that? Oh, okay, I need to change the way I interact with them or the way I interact with myself, right? Mm. Uh, you can hear it in the speak and, and the way people show up online and and all these other things, right? The, the, this world of, you know, selfies and Instagram and all that other stuff. It's like, we have to show up in our best possible light and, and you know, this particular way. Mm. It's like, if we can just be more transparent and authentic with ourselves and understanding what that is, then, you know, it's, it's not going to be an issue when we start generating more income, when we start um, creating like bigger impact in the world around us. Because again, like wanting more money is not a bad thing, Right but understanding what that's going to do to you and how to get there is I think the bigger conversation. Yeah. Right. Yes, you're right. I mean, if, if, if we're all good humans, right, Toby, and we want more money and driving after that money, because again, that big vision, that big goal is really what's driving us to make more money mm -hmm. Then all of us, you know, if, if we can make more money and this is kind of the, the mantra of my next gen millionaire movement. It's like, if I can breed for lack of better terms, so I can breed the, the mindset of a new generation of millionaires who understand this about themselves, then look at all the impact the world will have and all the things that will change because now the people who really want these big things and are really good human beings have the resources to then make those big dreams happen, right? And movements start to happen and, you know, change happens and, you know, we become better stewards of the resources we have in a way that helps promote humanity versus helps promote just like a single person. Yes, yeah, yeah. And that brings me to my next question. You know, you have this um, platform or net company called uh, Next Gen Millionaires, right? And when, yeah. when, when you're millionaires, you, you, you think of abundance, you think of, you know, plenty of money, millions of it actually. So can you tell me about um, this ne uh, Next Gen Millionaires and what do you do with Next Gen Millionaires? And the Next Gen Millionaires really is, um, you know, the, the kind of, I, I see it as more of a movement. 
you know, like I'm saying, like if we can start changing as we're like rising up through the entrepreneurial ranks or wherever you're at. And again, it's not like, I've had some people say, well, I don't think I really fit into this category. I'm like, why not? Well, I'm too old. It's not about age, right? It has nothing to do with age, but it's that next generation of people making million, millions of dollars, right? Because if, if my company can generate a million dollars, what can I do with that, right? If I can generate 2 million, 10 million, what now can I do? What, what impact can I have? And, and at first it's going to be small, right? Based upon the resources. But if I can start changing that, then look at, look at what I can do, right? Money can do a lot of things, but you look at like the billionaires from the United States. Um, one, of the, one of the best documentaries I've watched in a long time was Netflix has one about Bill Gates, right? And on all the humanitarian things he's doing and, and what he's doing with his wealth and what he has, mm. right? But there are other billionaires who are not doing those same kind of things. So it's like, what's the difference? Well, Bill has this different vision, mm. right? So if we can start to change the vision and the way people interact, with money and, and more so themselves and what they want to really accomplish, yeah. then the money is going to be a catalyst to get them there yes. versus the deterrent or, you know, just, you know, based upon, Oh, if I just want to make a lot of money, that's my only goal. Well, when you hit that, when do you hit that? If you hit that, then what else are you doing? Mm-hmm. Right. So next year, million millionaire movement is all about really changing that mindset of what are we going to do to make this world a better place? And what impact are we going to have? Okay. Now let's go make the, the, the money and the resources and find the people to help us get there. And if we can collectively do more of that, mm-hmm. then the world starts to become a better place. We start to take more care of people. We start to have different mindsets around resources and wealth and abundance in a way that helps promote humanity as a whole, mm-hmm. instead of just like the, Oh, I'm in it for myself and you know, whatever I can accomplish in my lifetime, then that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. So how, how can people join on this platform or these movements? Is it like by selection or anyone can just sign up? And- well, anybody can, anybody can sign up. It's not, I'm not particular, like uh, people who want to learn more about really their own, I say their own money holdbacks, right? Mm-hmm. And then things that are holding them back for money. So um, I actually have a download that I call the attitudes of money because I think it all starts with your attitude, mm-hmm. right? Your attitude, how you show up is going to dictate how you're, what steps you're going to take next. Yes. Um, so there's, there's a free da- download I have called attitudes of money that uh, people can go download and there's like a little, it's just a little assessment to be like, Hey, you know, look at these 10 attitudes and kind of where, where are you at? What do you need help with? Mm-hmm. Um, and then for now, it, you know, that leads to a Facebook group where we can have a, a furthering conversation, right. About, Hey, what's going on with these attitudes? Where are you showing up? How do you want to be supported uh, moving forward in what your big vision and big goal is? Right. And how can we calm some of the chaos that happens in life and, and all the other stuff, right. Back to my story of how did I calm the chaos enough so I could see through it. Mm-hmm. So now I can, you know, focus on what I really want to accomplish and let the relationships and the resources just show up for me as I'm, you know, just heading off into the, the thing I want to do. Um, so that's how they get started. So if you, they want that, they can go to www.attitudesofmoney.com. That's a free download. Just put your email address in there. Um, and you, it gets sent to you via email and then you can take the assessment. And then, like I say, there's a, right now, there's a Facebook group where you can go join. Uh, we can continue that conversation there. Oh, great. I'm going to place the link to this um, website and Facebook group in the show notes of this episode. So anyone who's interested could just, you know, um, copy the link from there and yeah, download the, um, the, the book or the, yeah, the form to fill up. And then maybe speak to you on Facebook also. Yeah. That's great. So, you know, you, um, this platform or this movement is about, you know, making impact and looking for ways to, you know, improve the environment, improve the world, the little way that we can. Um, but I think, first of all, one has to, like, you know, change one's attitude or one's relationship with money. So um, can you walk me through, like, some steps or give me some advice or some tips on how to cultivate, like, a very good attitude towards money or how to develop a, a good relationship with money? So I can make impact on this world. Yeah, which is. Yeah, and I think that goes back to uh, journaling, talking to money, right? That's that's mm. the one tool I always go back to. Just talk to your money, mm. see what it has to say, see what's coming up, understand the. Uh, as you're doing the journaling exercises, maybe break it down into two things. What's the one action step that it wants me to take? What are the emotions coming up as I'm talking to money and thinking about my big vision? And then, even though we got an action step, what am I going to do to make this happen? Mm. I would follow that small framework because as you do that again, it's a relationship, right? We want to have a two-way conversation. And as you do that, you'll start to become more confident in your ability to listen to your own intuition 
mm-hmm. and really listen to what money's saying. And if you go do those steps, uh, like the amount of change and impact you can make just by doing that in your own life, then starts to that kind of ripple effect, right? Then it starts to affect other people. And you get excited, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go do this. And then you talk to somebody else and you're like sharing those just on the side, you know, like, hey, you know, friend over here, like, listen, this is what money told me today. And they're like, what are you doing? Like money told you to do something, right? It starts this ripple effect. And I think you're crazy at first. You're like, no, look, and here's my results. And, and we start to see that as we start to look more at that from that perspective and we start to do and take those actions, yes. uh, people, we get excited. And when we're excited, people get excited around us. Mm. Then it starts to propagate those, those things, right? And then people start asking you questions. You're like, okay, is this weird? What's happening? And, and, and in other cases, you know, money starts to show up. And as money starts to show up, then you're able to enact the plans of the, for that big vision that you have. Yeah. And that's the end goal, right? And then the end goal is that whatever that, that big vision you want to have happen in your life, that starts happening. Mm. And when we're at that place, Toby, like our lives become so enriched and mm. so like just happy that then that joy spreads and it's infectious. Mm. That, that means everyone around us who gets, you know, impacted from it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. You know, um, of recent, I, w- I was learning something about, you know, uh, I don't even, um, in this 50, 30, 20 plan of um, structuring your income or something like that, where you have uh, 50% of your income is spent on, for example, on your needs, on your monthly needs, and 30% is spent on what you want, for example, maybe eating out or um, shopping, and 20% is for saving. Do you practice something like that with your money too, or? Do you have other methods or techniques or techniques of dealing with your money? Um, yeah, similar. I have, you know, some budget stuff. I don't generally talk about budgets. I like to talk more about what your budget means to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> budget, budgets are a whole other conversation. It's like, oh, now I'm telling my money where to go. Mm-hmm. What, what are my, like, what are the emotions starting to come up when, you know, oh, you know, if, like in your plan, right? If you have like 50% goes to your needs and, and taking care of like your rent and your food and all that stuff, what happens if it goes to 51%? Now are you a horrible failure? I don't know. That's up to you. But mm-hmm. see the emotions, the emotions are what get you. So I don't generally like, oh, here's the exact plan to follow for your finances. Cause there's mm-hmm. lots of different methods. I always say, choose the one that works best for you, but understand again, when you sit down to do it, because a lot of people like avoid doing this <laughs> uh, in their businesses too. Right. I always talk about numbers with uh, business owners that I work with and I'm like, and some of them will come to me and say, I don't know what I'm making each month. I'm like, well, there's your first step, right? We got to understand like what's going on because they're avoiding it or they're like, oh, hey, I give that to my accountant or my bookkeeper to take care of. Mm. I'm like, but you still got to know, right? The emotions that come up are more important than where you're allocating your money at first. Mm. Right? Yes. If you can understand the emotions and then you can start allocating for what your, your goals are, right? Do we want to have 50% of our income go towards our monthly expenses? Mm. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe some people like, oh, I can't do that because... You know, I, I can't have things I want because X, Y, and Z, right? I like that you brought up like, the, you know, this bucket of here are the, you know, the amount of income I'm going to do for wants because a lot of people just skip over that one. Mm. I have so many conversations about, you know, people's mindset around, oh, I need that versus I want that, mm. right? And there's a lot of conversation we could have around that too. Yeah. But looking at that, but it's cool you brought that up because our, our wants, what we want to have, have, have fun and, and go do things, that's, you know, those are important as well. It shows ourselves, again, that we can trust ourselves in making and generating the income so we can go do those fun things, mm-hmm. right? Life isn't just about working to pay our rent or our mortgage yeah, or just true. to buy food for our family, right? <laughs> it's much more than that, right? We want to have experiences as humans, of course, generally with other people, yeah. yes. um, you know, and then obviously save some for rainy days, right? Life, mm-hmm. if, we, if we can plan, um, John C. Maxwell, I read his book. He's got a book on leadership I read and in there, one of his laws of leadership always said, you know, a good leader will always plan for um, kind of the, the worst case scenario as well. Right. Mm-hmm. This is a little different anyways, but if we can plan for that in our own lives around money, like things will happen. Mm-hmm. We can't, we can't plan for a pandemic. And some people did really well this last year because of the pandemic and mm-hmm. some people like lost businesses and it was really hard on them. Mm-hmm. Right. But if we can plan for those things, then we're going to have kind of that little safety net because money brings up kind of that fight or fight, um, kind of survival um, emotion in us as well, yes. right? So if we can put a little bit there to be like, oh yeah, I have that. So mm-hmm. I, can, I can ease up a little bit. Okay, cool. Now I'm not like so tense about like, am I going to survive, mm-hmm. right? If we can get past that survival piece, then we can start to understand the emotions about what else is money telling me, 
But if it's always like, oh, I'm going to die because I don't have enough money to survive, mm-hmm. right? We got to take care of those survival needs. And as we do that, because that is an emotion, right? That survival need is an emotion. Yeah. What's it telling us? Yes. So if we can just become conscious about what our bodies are telling us and what money reflects back to us, mm-hmm. you know, then we'll be in a good state. So that's what like kind of my ideas about budgets. Cause like I say, it's a little bit different for everybody. It's like diets, right? Mm-hmm. A, a different diets work for everybody. Different budgets work for everybody. Yeah. But understand like why you're doing a budget or why you're not, you know, what are the emotions coming up when you're looking at your budget and understanding where you're putting the money mm-hmm. and as yeah. we become more fluid with that. Mm-hmm. then we're going to get better at understanding again, those emotions that come up because of money mm-hmm. and understanding what they're making us do. Right. Cause emotions drive all of our actions. If we're excited, we'll jump up and down. If we're scared, we'll go hide. Right. You look at all these, but emotions drive what we do. So if we can understand what the emotions are coming up, then we can understand the actions we take mm-hmm. because those actions in the end lead to a result, right? In our businesses, did I hit my monthly revenue or did I not? Well, if I didn't, let's backtrack. Like what emotions did I have? So I either did or didn't do something, mm-hmm. right? There's, there's a lot, a lot there, but if we start looking at that, then, but pay attention. That's, I guess my biggest thing is pay attention <laughs> to the emotions coming up, especially when it comes to money yeah. aspects. Like if you're looking at your investment accounts or you're looking at your budgets or, or whatever, mm-hmm. because as we do that, we can understand ourselves more. And as we understand ourselves better, then we can start to make different choices. Yeah. And as we do that, then we have different results. So I think- uh, I guess our, our, um, our emotions also determines what we define as our need and what we define, um, define as our wants, right? Or, yeah. Yeah, okay. Because sometimes people say, oh, I need this actually, but they, in the actual sense, they don't need it, but they just want it. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say like, if you look at Maslow, right? Maslow has a hierarchy of needs and all that stuff. But I would say at the end of the day, there are six things that we really need as we close up here, right? We have six things. We need air, right? We got to breathe as humans. We need food. We have to eat. We need shelter. We need a place to stay out of the elements. Mm-hmm. We need clothing. We need to protect our bodies from the elements. Um, let me see. We need. Um, I think we need water. I missed. Yeah, water. Okay, there we go. Water. I'm like I'm missing one. Cool. And then the sixth one I would say is we need love. Like as human con- beings, we need connection with other people. Mm-hmm. Outside of those six things, I would say those are the only needs you 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 have as a human being. Everything else is a want. Right? If those things are taken care of, then everything else is a want. And people challenge me all the time, but I always say, the, the thing is, if, if you look at the action, the emotion behind need mm-hmm. versus want, when we want something, we're unstoppable. Mm-hmm. If we need it, then you know, we'll do just enough to get there. Mm-hmm. And it's not like, take it for what you want. We all act the same way as humans. So if we want it, if we can say, I want that, there's a different energy on the inside of us and we go after it. Yes. So in my life, I've turned more of my so-called needs into wants. And when I do, right, I'm go after it. Like mm-hmm. there's, you know, vision boards, lots of different tools you can use to, to put those wants out there. But if you start changing the language, mm-hmm. then we can start changing the actions, right? Because there's, again, motion attached to all of it. So as we start yes. doing that, man, we become unstoppable. When we're unstoppable, man, those big visions happen. And then we help, you know, like five other people create their big visions. And then the world starts changing for the better. Yes, yeah, that's, that's great. That's true. So, you know, I've learned a lot from you already today. Like, I'm going to start um, trying to practice how to speak with money. Like, nice. <laughs> yeah, but, but from, from all your experiences, from everything you've um, been able to experience from life, from your stories, for example, what, what, are the others, um, sorry, what other advices would you give to someone like me or someone out there who wants to, you know, be prosperous, for example, or who wants to have a better relationship with with money, with other people, and you know, make impact um, in this world. What other advices or what other things do you think we should take into into um, consideration? Yeah, I think the the biggest thing is you know just get to know yourself more, mm-hmm. understand yourself because as you can understand yourself, you can start to understand the world around you better, mm-hmm. and the things that you don't necessarily like about yourself, change them. Right, it's a choice. Mm-hmm. We, we were taught how to do things a certain way. But if we challenge those, those teachings, then we can start to see things through a different lens, through a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Perspective is everything. Challenge what you think. Challenge how you act. And as you do that, life becomes way different. And as we start to change ourselves, the cool thing about this, Toby, is as we change our world, our internal world, then the world around us starts to change. You'll see people interact with you differently. Mm-hmm. right? You'll, you'll have different experiences. People will see you in a different light. 
Yes. Yeah. So if, if we want to start and, and money is like, like I say, again, as always, it's just a mirror I use. Mm. Right. And most of the time we don't want to sit in the mirror and, and look at ourselves and be like, Hey, you're an awesome guy. Like, keep it up. Like it's still so uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. But if we could do that, right. Right. Words of affirmations on our bathroom mirrors or, or, you know, just like look at ourselves and, and listen to ourselves and speak things out loud. Mm. We start to have this better relationship with ourselves. Right. And that's the one that really matters. Mm. And as we, it was, as we start to create connection with ourselves, then it's easier for us to create connection with other people. Mm. And as we do that, then, like I say, resources, money, people, things start popping up out of what feels like nowhere. Right. And that's, that's the crazy thing. You can say, oh, it came out of nowhere. Well, no, it didn't. If you backtrack and look and take the time to look at it, you can see all the things that you did to get there, right? Again, it's like money and emotions are just like, you know, weight loss or, or weight gain. Yes. It, it's just, it happens so subtly to us, but people on the outside see the difference and change. Yes. And there's yeah. nobody that can do it, but you, right? You're right. You're right. And I, I, I'm also, I was smiling um, when you mentioned, mentioned of, um, using money as a mirror, or you know, making using mirrors, you know, for reflection because this podcast is called Mirror Talk, right? Because yep, yep. I want every conversation to help my listeners and myself actually to reflect on different topics of life, different aspects of life. And this is also a point or a topic where I will sit back, listen back to this episode and reflect on my relationship with my money, relationship with other people around me, and relationship with you know all my visions actually, with the way I'm you know pursuing my visions and my my dreams in life. Yeah. So um, how, how can we stay connected with you? How can we, you know, you know, get across to you to get more words of advice or sorry, more words of wisdom, for example, or, you know, just get enrolled to your coaching uh, platform or your speaking engagements? Yeah. So um, you can definitely go download, like I mentioned earlier, the Attitudes of Money, uh, or you can go to uh, my website, which is uh, www.josephmburns.com. And I have whatever I'm doing now, wherever I'm speaking, um, there's uh, all my social media handles on the site as well. You can go follow me on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, um, and YouTube coming soon. But I don't know that's for podcasts. It will be there. There will be a YouTube channel as well. So um, I just want to, my, my, my goal is to get out as much content to people, right? So they can see, they can start to change um, the little things. And then when they're ready for more help, then they can contact me and we can, you know, figure out what kind of help you need and move forward that way. Yes, oh, that's awesome. Are there other questions I've not asked you that you would love to talk about briefly or um, do you think we've covered the old base already? <laughs> no, I think we covered like everything. This is, this is really awesome, Toby. Oh, thank you so much um, for your time. I, I mean, I've learned a lot from you today. It's something new I learned, like not just one thing, but various things actually from you today. And I'm really grateful for everything that you taught me to this, this time. Yeah, thank you so much. Cool. You bet. Thanks, Toby. This has been a blast being on here.